Hello everybody, this is Bill Ennis with Autodesk and today we're going to discuss Flame Premium. I've uh, got my colleague Mark Hamaker from Autodesk who's joining me for this conversation. Mark, welcome. Thanks Bill and uh, thanks for the chance to uh, go through Flame Premium and really look at what it is that makes Flame Premium different. And I think uh, what's unique about the presentation that you've put together is it really addresses uh, how Flame Premium fits into the workflows of people who are maybe considering coming to it from uh, Autodesk Flame or from Autodesk Smoke Advanced. Yeah, absolutely. And we actually intentionally uh, created this uh, this uh, presentation around different sections, so different points of view from the operator's perspective. Yeah, in this first section, you're going to address what it means to cross-grade to Flame Premium for Smoke Advanced users. Yeah, and there's going to be obviously a lot of benefits here, and we'll get into the details, but but really like uh, letting letting Smoke Advanced users know that they're still be in their comfort zone when they come to Flame Premium. Yeah, I think that's key. Um, and for really anyone that wants more information on Flame Premium, and we'll remind you a couple times throughout the, the, the video where you can go for information, but at autodesk.com slash Flame Premium, we've created a site that has a lot of information on the product itself and the offering. Uh, and then we've also created some top reasons. So there's actually five reasons that we kind of highlighted for you, regardless of what kind of uh, artist you are, whether you're a flame artist, a smoke artist, or even a luster artist, to kind of highlight the things that will uh, maybe appeal to you in cross-grading to Flame Premium. Yeah, there's a lot of great information there. So at a high level, uh, when you're looking at the digital production pipeline for Autodesk Media Entertainment, you can see that we've now got the three products, Flame, Smoke, Advanced, and also Luster, uh, in the new offering, Flame Premium. But this is more than just a, a bundle, because uh, what's interesting about Flame Premium is you actually have access uh, to some exclusive workflows and things that are only possible inside of Flame Premium. Exactly, and that's what we're going to highlight today. Yeah, so we, we like to call this presentation something for everyone because, again, we're, we're kind of mentioning how, uh, regardless of what your background is, there are some interesting things to consider when working with Flame Premium. So for this conversation, we're going to start as if you're a smoke artist and you're considering what Flame Premium will mean for you. And I think there's a couple of interesting points that we've highlighted here, which is you have the timeline creative workflow that you're used to, but you also have access to the Flame Creative Tools. So this is what we like to refer to uh, this section as the tools you want, but the timeline that you're already familiar with. Yeah, and what does that mean? So I'm just gonna I'm not gonna read through every one of the items on this slide, but uh, just to give you an idea, if you're a current Smoke Advanced user and you cross grade to Flame Premium, of course you get the full Flame software license. You also get access to Luster for real time color grading. But even when you're working within that Smoke timeline inside of Flame Premium, you have access to all of these uh, action nodes and tools that you didn't have before. So the 3D tracker, the particle system, uh, substance textures and presets. So that's that's really going to change, I think, the way you work with action uh, as you get into it. And Bill's going to take us through some of those examples. Yeah, it's really all the things that Smoke Advanced users would beat me up about when I visited them. So. Exactly. <laughs> it's the tools you've always wanted. Uh, but then also when you get into the uh, batch effects area inside of the timeline workflow, uh, all those flame creative nodes that uh, were not in Smoke Advanced and are still not in Smoke Advanced uh, as a standalone software are actually available inside of Flame Premium. Yeah, and exactly. That's, that's the, the real value proposition of uh, migrating from Smoke Advanced to Flame Premium is you get all these extra tools, but you can still use that Smoke interface that you know and love. Okay, now Bill, you've launched Flame Premium, and for the first part of the demo portion, we're going to start using the Smoke Advanced workflow. That's right. So when we go into the software, we're presented with our, our basic Smoke UI here. Now, we said initially that we were going to talk about what uh, Flame Premium means for a Smoke Advanced user. But before we do that, there are a couple things that as a Flame user, you might be interested in thinking about. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I, I just wanted to make you uh, aware of the fact that uh, on the user level, if we go in and edit the user that I'm currently using, you can see that we can choose to work in Smoke or Flame with either the Smoke or Flame hotkeys. So this is great because it, it means you have a familiar environment. The muscle memory that you have as a Flame guy is not lost just because you need to work with a timeline uh, or this more traditional timeline workflow inside of Flame Premium using that smoke yeah, workflow. Yeah, it's really a huge benefit. Uh, you don't find yourself uh, exiting action back to the desktop so frequently. And the other thing that you can see here is if I make a new user, that when you're creating a user in general, you can also choose to create a luster user at the same time. So you can have one common user between the softwares. Which, and uh, and we'll which get into useful. the real-time color grading aspect of Flame Premium a little bit later. But uh, to start out, let's stick with our theme of showing, uh, really quickly showing a couple 
couple of tools that uh, somebody coming from the Flame background might not realize they have access to when they cross grade to Flame Premium. Yeah, and that would be around things like here on the desktop, the ability to quickly get your uh, list list view of your info for your individual source clips here. So you can see that I can quickly pull up uh, a view of my source, record time code, my tape names, my durations. You can I add can comments, comments, things, things like, like that. that. So, so that's interesting. Um, what I think is really uh, maybe that Flame people might not realize is that let's say you're going to you know work with the timeline, you can actually edit uh, using a traditional editorial view. Yeah, so you can have on the left side we see our, our different source uh, source clips and then if we uh, if we tap on the right we can activate our record timeline and you can see now I'm navigating through my uh, my record timeline and over here on the left again we can switch between the different source clips that I just uh, highlighted on the original desktop we can play through those set uh, you know source record uh, endpoints and uh, and then quickly bring those down into our record timeline using uh, either hotkeys or the buttons that are placed right here Okay, so that's cool, and I think uh, you know a lot of Flame people are going to like working this way. And what's great is they don't have to actually sacrifice the creative tools to have access to this timeline workflow. And that really leads us back to um, what's different inside of Flame Premium if you're a Smoke Advanced user. What, what what's the real advantage? The here? two big things to point out are going to be around action, and then of course around. Uh, the, the batch effects, the batch workflow within the timeline. So let's start by uh, going into action and I'm just going to bring in the standard uh, clip that I use a lot to show 3D tracking. Uh, we're in a HD project so let's go ahead and switch to the background resolution so that's going to be bringing that to NTSC. We'll, we'll get rid of the original image that's automatically added and notice here within action we've got our, our 3D tracking menu so right down the, the list here we have our, our 3D tracking menu We'll kick off the 3D uh, track analysis, the automatic background analysis, and then just sort of highlight over here um, that we've got additional tools that you're not used to seeing in Smoke. And, and I think right away the 3D tracking is, I know one of the things uh, a lot of Smoke artists have told me, that's one thing they would love to see uh, inside of Action. And again, Flame Premium makes that possible. Yeah, and you can see we've also got the deform uh, nodes, the deform meshes uh, to put around 3D objects and so on. We've got shaders, we've got all the particles, the 3D particles here, as well as presets, projectors. We'll take a look at a couple of those examples, but you can see that, that our, uh, our um, Action has returned a new camera from the 3D track analysis. I always like to show the, uh, the top view on that so you can see there's a point cloud has been generated. Our new camera is now passing through by the original camera and you can see all the points that have been placed automatically in our scene so that we can place objects within this environment. Okay, so that's cool and we're going to get a little later into a real world example of how camera tracking ties in. Um, but kind of continue with this tour, like what, what else is there that a smoke artist uh, didn't have in action before but now with Flame Premium he has access to? Well that would be things like uh, the 3D particles and projections. So this is a, another clip that I like to use to, to show that. So we're going to go back into action, we'll clear out everything that's in there now. And again we'll just sort of reset our scene, we'll get rid of the original uh, image that is added and turn our background off. Uh, we're going to start by, uh, by bringing in a light and that's going to be the source for our, our particles. So we bring a particle generator in, also bring another light and that's going to allow me to to light the particles. So I'll pull pull that second light back a bit. You can see now we're just playing out and uh, automatically generating 3D particles in 3D space. So let's go ahead and start to uh, to animate this around a bit. Again, we'll we'll look at the top view, makes it a little bit easier and I'm going to turn on a path and that's going to help uh, allow me to uh, to position the light on the first frame where I want it to go. So we'll start here on frame one, and then let's say every 20 frames, I'm just going to start to uh, to move the particles along that path. Yeah. And what's cool about this is this is the same 3D particle system that you've seen in Flame demos. So I'm sure lots of people have seen you use these in different examples. And again, being available right here inside the smoke workflow, that's that's really something that's only available in Flame Premium. Exactly. And and this also, you know, leads to a lot of things like compatibility between uh, you know, moving back and forth between the applications themselves. All these setups are going to be compatible when when open in either software. So you can see here I've got my path. You can see I can even start to play with the tangent handles. If we go back to the first frame now and just start to play through, you can see that we've got the, the particles moving along there. And uh, again, we could go back and start to make adjustments. Uh, maybe we want the particles to be uh, line, uh, points instead of lines. We can do things like add uh, a much higher number. Uh, we can play around with the speed. 
uh, you know, so we can really get in and make some adjustments. And again, you, know, you can just see how quickly we're able to, uh, to work through these. And, and also uh, do things like uh, adjust things like the colors because these are actual geometry. We can go in and, and adjust something like the color as well as they get emitted. And I think a little later you're going to show us some examples of the presets that are available in the, the, the flame example. Absolutely. And let's go in and just reset that branch now. And I'm also going to uh, reset the camera and, and look at another option, which is uh, to, to actually generate um, the, the particles as, uh, as squares. And, and this would be a good example because the squares actually always face the camera, which is, which is a nice option. We're going to create a, a higher number, again, a longer lifetime. So we've got our, our squares being, being emitted, and then uh, we'll also slow them down a bit. So we've got them coming out in a much more of a, a cluster there. And then we'll bring our, our imagery in, but not just as a standard image. This time we're going to add it in as a projector. So again, uh, texture projection is, is a great tool. As you can see, I can kind of point the, the projector at that cluster of particles. And as they get emitted, you can see that we're able to, uh, to actually move around them. So if we zoom the camera out, orbit around, you can see what we've got going on there. Uh, and then what we'll do is over time, we'll just animate the, uh, the projector to, to pull back so that we're hitting all the particles over time. So this is great for motion graphics or just playing around in design. It's really interactive and fast too, which exactly. is kind of the key to the, the particles. Plus they're actually here in 3D space of action. They're not like a plug-in that's kind of laid on top of a final Yeah, you composite. can like fly right through them, which I think is, is really impressive. And again, the, the speed is, is just amazing. In fact, if we want to go ahead and render a bit of that, you can see that it's, it's virtually a real-time uh, playback of, of that particle uh, scene with the projection happening on top. And then you can always take it a lot further. Um, we can put the background back on, for example, to kind of combine these two uh, these things together. Maybe kind of zoom in a bit more to get it to match the, uh, the position of our, uh, of our skater there. And then uh, we can also use different blending modes for the projection itself. So for example, we could put that into a spotlight mode. Uh, let's render a version in that way, something like that. And then finally, the, the thing that's also exciting is the ability to then add on top of this, you know, the more intensive um, things like, um, you know, motion blur. So if we go in and just enable the motion blur here, do a quick preview, you can see how that, that's going to look. We could even increase, you know, the shutter. And again, that type of operation, again, based on this really fast hardware that we're using, uh, really doesn't tax the system too much. So again, the, the full flame creative tool set here inside of Action, regardless of whether you're using the, the, the smoke timeline workflow or desktop workflow or, or the traditional flame workflow. Now, uh, aside from Action, though, that's not the only place that there are some different tools here in Flame Premium. No, and, and that's the other exciting part and in, in terms of compatibility, in terms of our, uh, our, our ability to kind of, you know, have no limitations on either uh, any part of the Flame Premium offering. Um, we can also go in and, and take a look in batch. So let's go ahead and, uh, and, and delete these uh, renders that I started with, and we'll switch uh, back to uh, the uh, record timeline. Now, now batch is not new inside of, of Smoke work the Smoke workflow. Right. No. Now batch isn't new inside of this uh, timeline workflow, but what is new is that you're working in a in a full smoke workflow, and you have access to all of the different batch nodes that were previously only available in Flame. Exactly. So if we go in, and I've highlighted one section of this uh, much larger timeline that we'll get into uh, more detail in the next uh, example in Flame. Uh, if we kind of zoom into this section, you'll see that we've got uh, two scenes with the batch effects applied. So um, this is actually a, a pretty interesting uh, way of working. For example. Um, inside of each of these segments is actually a very large composite and, and we're going to get into more detail here. But something that I really like about the batch effects workflow is just adjusting the timing between two uh, completely uh, you know, different composited scenes. Um, for example, if I turn on snap to positioner here, I can pick up the second uh, the, the, the end graphic, our, our uh, package shot here, and just move the timing earlier. Right? I could say I want that to actually come in a bit earlier, dissolve on earlier, and it's that easy to, to really uh, adjust the timing between two completely composited scenes. If we step inside the batch effect itself, you'll see that now we've got our, uh, our, our action scene. And this is a great example of, uh, again, some more of the additional tools available inside of, um, inside of uh, action. If we reselect action there, 
uh, you can see if I turn the icons back on here we just have a Photoshop file that we're projecting onto a basic cylinder with a freeform deformation applied to uh, adjust the uh, the size and width of that cylinder and if we look in the schematic view you can see here are the various pieces of that Photoshop file that I can manipulate right so I could go in and grab the uh, the Guinness logo itself you know, move that around. Uh, again, we're, we're working with a, a texture projection of that Photoshop file. So as I move that in and, and rotate that, you can see again our, our basic cylinder is being uh, hit by that. If I move the camera a bit, you can see we can get that, that 3D kind of parallax that, that you would get with a real camera in this scene. And then of course we've got our freeform deformation which allows us to, uh, to make those adjustments using this lattice. So people not, might not realize this is actually the cylinder model that comes with the software software that you've just bent in using this, yeah. this deform tool that was never available inside of uh, Smoke Advanced. That's right, and if we wanted to use uh, you know, a pint glass or maybe we want more of a Pilsner glass, we can make those adjustments here. There's also uh, some interesting shading going on. Yeah, exactly. That's the other thing I wanted to point out is here we're using the shader and uh, there's in the, in the pixel shading uh, uh, architecture of action now we've got really nice um, uh, light that we can uh, we can manipulate because we can actually apply shaders to the different objects in this case the cylinder we're able to uh, to really get the uh, the shader to apply the uh, specific type of of um, algorithm that we want to use in this case and an anisotropic shader uh, which will allow us to get a very nice subtle highlight there on on the glass uh, so again um, really really nice um, you know, 3D tools that are, that are inside of uh, inside of uh, Action itself to uh, to allow us to uh, to do our own 3D instead of having to always rely on a 3D application. And now, now I can just begin the rendering process and look at that in real time. Now we we looked at the Action Node again inside of Batch, but what's different actually inside of Batch? There are, there are some tools that are that were previously not available using this this timeline workflow of Smoke. Yeah, that's a good point. So let me just uh, now that I've rendered that, I'll just you know scrub through. So you can see I've adjust the highlight there on the Guinness glass. Let's go back into uh, to Batch and have a look at what you're talking about. There are all the uh, the tools that are uh, that were previously only uh, available in Flame, and I've got kind of a breakdown of, of some of those tools. Yeah, We've got these the are all the creative there. tools that were maybe never there before. So things like the the full 3D keyer. I mean, that's great if you do a lot of chroma key work. Yeah. And uh, we've got uh, the motion blur tool, motion analysis tool, the motion convert tool because we have uh, access to the 3D blur tool, uh, things like motifs. So if we were to feed um, our, our Guinness uh, packet shot into the motif node here, uh, we could easily go in and start to, uh, to manipulate um, and create something that looks uh, you know, quite interesting right out of the gate using the motif tool. So this is really what we mean when we talk about it being our ultimate finishing tool set because we've really put no limitations here. So regardless of how you like to work, whether it's in this traditional smoke workflow uh, or whether you're a, a flame artist coming in, you have access to all of these great creative tools. That's it. That's really the message that we're trying to get out. And if I were to feed that back into the timeline, now we would be able to, uh, to use the motif instead of the, uh, the original file that we were working with. Okay, great. So that's part one. That's a, a real high-level overview of Flame Premium coming at it from a Smoke Advanced user's point of view or maybe a Flame user who's curious about what the advantages of having that Smoke timeline workflow are going to be inside of Flame Premium. Exactly.